welcome back. You see me? So people, today we're gonna talk about the first international superstar reggae entertainer from Jamaica. As a matter of fact, this entertainer that we're gonna talk about is the first international superstar from the entire Caribbean. The name of this entertainer is Millie Small and we are talking about a female. I know that a lot of persons might have been thinking Bob Marley and Jimmy Cliff and so on but people, Millie Small is actually the entertainer who paved the way for superstar like Bob Marley and Jimmy Cliff. You understand people? Cheers my lovely ones. I hope you will have a very happy new year and I hope you all get rich quick. Cheers babies, my lovers, friends. Millie Small is the entertainer who bring the label Island Records won by Chris Blackwell to the forefront and Island Records is the company that really bring Jimmy Cliff and Bob Marley to international stardom. So people, we're gonna talk a little bit about Millie Small for you all to get an understanding of who this individual is and we're gonna talk about some of her music, events that led to her downfall in music. As also, we'll talk about some issues that she had in life and eventually talk a little bit about her death. Millicent Dolly Mae Small was born on the 6th of October 1947 in Clarendon, Jamaica. She is also the daughter of a sugar plantation overseer. She was one of 13 siblings with 7 brothers and 5 sisters. Ever since Millicent was a young girl, she used to always have a passion for music and entertainment. So at the age of 12 year old, her passion led her to compete in a talent competition when she was 12 years old. She was a winner of that talent competition. Everyone loved her style of music, the way she delivered. She was a crowd favorite, but the fact that she loved music and she wanted to pursue a career in music, she moved from Clarendon and went to Kingston because you know, back in those days, for you to get any form of opportunity, you have to leave the country and go to Kingston where more opportunities are as it relates to getting into entertainment, music and so on. So she went to live with relatives in Lovelyan, Kingston. Whilst being there and trying to establish herself as an artist, she auditioned for Coxwan Dad, who was astonished by her voice and the way she delivered her music. He even said that her voice reminds him of an entertainer from America by the name of Shirley Goodman, who is one of an American duo. Coxwan Dad produced several collaborations between Millie and Owen Gray, who was a successful entertainer back in that time. They even made a hit song titled Sugar Plum. Sugar Plum was a major hit song in Jamaica. But after a time, Owen Gray started to do his solo music again and, and Millie Small started working with other entertainers. She did a lot of music with Rai Pantan, you know what I mean? And they even had a duo, Rai and Millie. They made several local hit songs, you understand people? She even recorded a collaboration with Prince Buster. And as you know, Millie Small's popularity began to grow and this brought her to the attention of Chris Blackwell, who is the owner of Island Records. Chris Blackwell at this time really needed somebody to get his record label off the ground and he saw her as the perfect candidate who can give him that hit record that he really needs to get his record label off the ground. Chris Blackwell could easily see what a lot of other persons could not recognize. He saw the international potential in this young girl. So Chris Blackwell spoke to Coxwan dad about handing over the entertainer's affair to him, allow him to become her manager, you know what I mean? And you know Coxwan dad did not want to hold her down. So Chris Blackwell eventually talked to her parents because at that time she was a minor. So he talked to her parents and so on and so forth and he became her legal guardian because the parents gave consent for her to leave Jamaica and go to England with Chris Blackwell. Whilst in England, she received intensive 
training and she also did a lot of schooling so people in late 1963 she recorded her first single in london england a song titled don't you know but that song did not make much impact you understand people so she had to go back to the drawing board again with her team and you know chris blackwell was still convinced that this is the person to give him that big hit song that he wants to take his record label to the next level so you know chris blackwell never give up on her because him see what she have in her her second recording was a song titled my boy lollipop that song was originally done by a teenager in the united states barbie gale in 1956 but millie small and her team rearranged that song you understand people so millie's version of this song people was released in 1964 and it was a instant mega massive hit song for millie small this song immediately increased her popularity and she appeared on many popular tv shows in england doing interviews this song reached number two on the uk charts it reached number two on the billboard at 100 charts and number two in canada also this song also topped the charts in places like australia this song initially sold over 600 000 copies in the uk this song went on to sell more than 7 million copies people making mini small very very popular and famous worldwide the first reggae entertainer from jamaica to ever have made that kind of impact in music and people millie smiles was just 17 years of age a very very young lady and that is the song that put reggae music on the map and paved the way for the other greats that came after her so you know we have to give credit to who paved the way people we also have to give credit to chris blackwell even though the song was not released under island records at that time chris blackwell did not have enough resource to push the music the way he wanted it and he did not want to hold on the song chris blackwell allowed another producer to produce the song who could push it to the extent where it reached and that record label is fantana record label so people this 17 year old number three ranked entertainer in the world at that time was touring the entire britain and she was appearing on a lot of tv shows she eventually collapsed from exhaustion and food poisoning at one of her appearances and during that same time she was also involved in a horrific traffic accident and i mean where she was her. so on the heels of her success with lollipop she released another song titled sweet william but this song was not nearly as half as popular as her other hit song even though it went on the charts but it did not matter to her much because she was so much of a big celebrity now and people wanted to see her all over the world so she was touring america she was touring canada she was touring all over the world and then i mean making a little money here and there she also recorded a few albums which performed at relatively average and i mean people she even did a collaboration with then very young jimmy cliff who was just coming in the business so she never really find another song as big as lollipop but that song was big enough to have her touring the entire world which she did extensively in 1968 her contract with island records came to an end after she had released two albums and uh, that label but as a result of this extensive tours and being all over the world you know her popularity started to dwindle a bit in britain but in 1969 she got back a little bit of popularity when reggae music started to get popular in the uk in 1969 at that time she released a song titled my love and i which got a little bit of traction millie small signed a deal with president records but after a short time with that label she eventually ended her career as a recording artist however she continued to tour the world and also 
perform in Jamaica. Remember the people, her song done big already. She don't have the status there, so she continue to tour, but she stopped record music. In 1974, she decided that she's gonna move to live in Singapore, where she resided for about two years before she returned to Britain in 1973 after that time she started to stay out of the public eyes she was not doing interviews she was not doing shows she was not allowing anyone access to her even when her song was reissued to mark island records 25th anniversary she still stayed out of the public though her song charted on the billboard now we're gonna talk about a very sad chapter in Millie Small's career. In 1987, during a rare interview with a TV station, it was revealed that she was in destitution. Yes, people, it was revealed that she got broke. And remember, you know, people, at this point, she was living in England. You get me? I say, yeah, man, she was broke. It is even said that she and her daughter was living in a hostel, meaning that she was basically a homeless person. And we are talking about the first international superstar from Jamaica that sing big hit song was ranked number three in the world who handled the business aspect of the music. And they used to cheat the artists out of their fair share of royalties from there's no way such a big superstar should have to resort to living in a hostel you understand the message people so you know say she was being cheated of end up being the rich ones and i know people one of the reasons i believe that millie small stayed out of the public was because maybe the condition that she was living in she was not comfortable with what was happening in her life however in november 1987 she made a rare public appeal 2006 it was said that she would be recording new music because she spent years writing music doing paintings and raising her daughter you know being a proper mother it is said that when chris blackwell found out that she was homeless and in destitution he purchased a home for her in england and also ensured that she started receiving a certain percentage of royalties for the usage of her music on august 6 2011 which was the 49th anniversary of jamaica's independence the governor general made millie small a commander in the order of distinction for her outstanding contribution to the music and entertainment industry of Jamaica. This award was however accepted on her behalf by then Prime Minister Edward Siago as she did not turn up. So people, it was obvious that she was deliberately staying away from the cameras and staying under the radar. Maybe she became afraid of fame because she was so famous from a very young age. I think it had a negative impact and her mental capacity people imagine she spent almost 40 years out of the limelight and refused all interviews and i mean refused all public appearance refused all offers she received to appear and show she refused all of that she did not make any public appearance until she finally decided to do an in-depth interview with an american journalist named Tom Graves. This was in August 2016. Millie Small died on the 5th of May in London in 2020 from a stroke. She was 72 years old at the time of her death. Her death was announced by Chris Blackwell who is the owner of Island Records. Blackwell also stated that the last time he saw her was 12 years ago. So obviously, Millie Small was staying out of the media and staying out of everybody's way. You know what I mean? I guess she just wanted to be by herself and raise her daughter as a normal person. She was no longer interested in the fame or being famous or to be out there in the public's eyes. So people, 
my opinion on Millie Small's musical journey is that you know Millie Small was a young girl who had a passion for music and had a God-given talent to perform music and to express herself her talent was spotted by other persons with proper experience of the music industry and they saw the opportunity in her to make them a lot of money and that is the reason why at a young age she was signed and taken to england where she was groomed to be this perfect entertainer maybe she met up on rough times while she was under the guardianship of other persons you understand people because remember you know these people are not our relatives she was basically working with them so we do not know what she had to go through whilst she was there practicing music and working on her career after she eventually sing the big song you know what i mean got the big break and made the producers extremely rich you know what i mean she still ended up being homeless and living in destitution without money you understand people i'm just saying this to say a lot of entertainers were cheated out of their fair share of royalties back then because person take you up and them say them take care of you, you know what i mean they make you sign certain documentation and you don't realize we are signed because they give you food shelter transportation and so on and so forth so you think that they are looking out for your best interest but a lot of times they are looking out for themselves you understand people however Millie Small will forever be a legend of reggae music in Jamaica her talent did not go unnoticed by the Jamaican authority as they gave her the honor that she deserved however I think that she is a person that should be talked about more whenever we're talking about Jamaican musical history you understand people because a lot of persons only talk about Bob Marley and Bob Marley but what about the person who made it possible for Bob Marley and Jimmy Cliff and so on and so forth remember you know Chris Blackwell is the one who took those individuals to the next level and remember you know this is the person we are talking about who gave Chris Blackwell that big break that he wanted you understand people so she boss Chris Blackwell Chris Blackwell saw the potential in her and him groom her her raw talent made Chris Blackwell who he is now you understand people Chris Blackwell bring a lot of other artists to the forefront so Millie Small is the one who paved the way for Jamaican entertainers go international because she is the first one to go international from the Caribbean remember at one point in the people she was the number three artist in the whole world you see me and me can bet say a lot of the young artists them nowadays do not know who name so they might know the song because they hear play already but them don't know who name so and they never take the time out to check and see who this individual is and to check out our story anyway people thanks for watching you can like subscribe share peace <laughs>
that good?